What I'm about to tell you may come as a shock, but hear me out. There was, believe it or not, a brief period in the late 1990s and early 2000s when it was possible to make a living from digital stock photography. It might sound like bullshit, but it's true. Regular photographers used to be able to pay the bills by licensing their images to stock libraries. Even if you weren't getting rich off stock photography, it was a nice little side hustle for many photographers, bringing in a few welcome residual payments to compensate for the lean periods associated with any creative job. The craft of being a photographer was valued and consequently, people were willing to pay money for photographs. Unfortunately, those days are long gone and unless you operate a stock photo business on an industrial scale, as some folks admittedly do, you cannot get even close to breaking even in stock photography. It's a mugs game, a scam and a glorified pyramid scheme. When you factor in all the hours you've sunk into learning the craft of photography and all the money you've spent on equipment and all the further time you then spend taking and editing your photographs, you will never get close to being reimbursed for the investment that you made in time, effort and money. This, my friends, is a cold, hard fact. As desolate as the stock photography scene is, however, in this video, I wanted to talk about the preeminent anti-stock photography website, Unsplash, and why I think it's a sucking black hole in the middle of the photography scene. <laughs> guys I want to explain why I think Unsplash is so unremittingly awful. Now before I get into the negatives and the negatives of Unsplash let's cover a bit of the backstory and more specifically why we photographers are getting so royally screwed. Now as I see it there are two reasons. The first reason is middlemen and the second reason is self-belief. So let's talk about the middlemen first. And in the world of commercial photography, the middlemen are the stock libraries. They serve as a conduit between the photographer and the client that wants to use their image. They hook them up with each other and in return, they take a percentage. Their USP is that they can put your photograph in front of people who want to use it commercially and whom you'd ordinarily have trouble connecting with. In the modern era, stock libraries are in international conglomerates that hoover up photography from all over the world, package it up, stack it high and sell it cheap. These businesses have slowly but surely turned stock photography into a zero sum game. Getty, Shutterstock, Dreamstime and Adobe, to name but four, sign up photographers, plunder their photographic portfolios and reward them with chump change in return for their graft and creative skills. There are strong parallels here between several industries, but one that springs to mind here in Australia is milk. Thanks partly to the processors that sell milk onwards to stores, and thanks partly to the supermarket chains, the price of a litre of milk has been pushed further and further down. It's reached the point now where farmers are barely able to break even, and incredibly, milk is now cheaper than water. That's bonkers, right? This same process has occurred in hundreds of industries in all of the countries of the world and photography, commercial photography, is no different. The situation has been woeful for a long time now, but it got really bad when the stock libraries introduced subscription packages that offered subscribers cut price access to photographs in return for agreeing to pay a fee every month. The stock libraries loved this system as they got regular payments every month whether the photographs are being licensed or not. It's exactly like the business models employed by most modern gym chains. They count on the fact that a high percentage of people will not use their facilities very often, if at all. Photographers got royally fucked by subscription stock packages because they didn't see any portion of those monthly payments unless someone actually licensed their photo. And even if, by some remote chance, someone did license their photo through a subscription package, the photographer's payment, their tiny percentage of the customer's monthly subscription fee, is a minuscule amount, usually less than a dollar. So subscription-based packages from stock libraries are an unmitigated disaster for photographers. But let's be honest here, 
it's only marginally better outside the subscription system. For the amount of time and effort required to take a photo, the photographer will earn only a few bucks in chump change for their efforts. In order to earn anything close to approaching a decent residual income of, let's say, $2,000 a month, you'd have to upload tens of thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of images to the stock library, each of which would, of course, have to be titled, categorized, and keyworded. You'd also have to make sure your images remained topical in order to ensure that anyone searching the billions of images in those libraries wanted your images in the first place. All right, so I think we've established that stock photo libraries are a disaster and that no photographer should have anything whatsoever to do with them. What, my friends, does Unsplash have to do with all of this? Well, it's simple. Unsplash is the natural endpoint for stock photography, the last chance saloon, the logical and inevitable conclusion to the endless reduction in royalties. You see, in order to compete with the existing stock libraries, the founders of Unsplash came up with a brilliant idea. Instead of reimbursing photographers for their efforts, pay them nothing. Nada. Zilch. The genius of Unsplash was that it made giving away photos feel like a virtuous act. In fact, if you got bamboozled by their nuclear grade bullshit and jumped on their hype train, they made you feel like they were almost doing you a favor, taking your photographs off your hands for nothing. There have always been public domain photo libraries, but Unsplash tried and partially succeeded in making giving away your photographs for nothing feel good. They industrialized the public domain photo library scene. In 2013, when the founders of Unsplash began their campaign against commercial stock photography, they branded themselves as a force for good. And the really hilarious thing is that they got away with it. There were even Unsplash events at which photographers who had given away their photographs for nothing met up with other photographers who'd given away their photographs for nothing and they patted each other on the back for giving away their photographs for nothing. Pretty soon businesses started paying attention to Unsplash and began leveraging the massive library of images as value adds for their own commercial products. So Medium partnered with Unsplash to make the library available right within their system. Apple jumped on board pretty early in the piece too, then Trello, Weebly, Squarespace, and countless others. And why wouldn't they? There's no downside for those companies. It was the gift that kept on giving. Everyone did well out of it, except for, you've guessed it, the photographers. The level of batshit crazy marketing bullshit that Unsplash unleashed in order to market their site was quasi-religious. In 2018, Unsplash was celebrating an investment of $7 million that their photographic contributors would never see much as a cent of, and they said this. And this is a direct quote. The Unsplash ecosystem is pushing the impact of photography further than ever before. Our aim is to make photography a universally accessible art form. The purpose of raising this investment is to build a new type of economic future for photography when it is set free. What the actual fuck? A new type of economic future photography when it is set free. How is it an economic future if it's free, you drop kicks? It might have been an economic future for you and the rest of the Unsplash crew, but not so much for the millions of folks who put you there. And also, what part of the art form of photography wasn't universally accessible before? It's the most successful art form on the fucking planet. Of course, that $7 million investment was a small drop in the ocean compared to what came next. And this was always the likely outcome that the founders of Unsplash had been working towards. The champions of public domain photography sold their company to the biggest stock photography business on planet Earth, Getty Images. Yes, Getty, the company that devours all stock libraries standing in its way and who previously acquired and ruined other notable companies like 500 Pix and iStock Photo. And they decided to spend cold hard cash on a service that gives photos away for nothing. If this isn't proof that Unsplash is just one massive racket, then I don't know what is. Getty are a phenomenally successful company, and they knew full well that there was money to be made on the backs of photographers who naively gave their creative work away for nothing. Now, over the years, I heard a lot of crap about Unsplash, and one of the popular marketing messages they put out was that 
Giving away your photos could open up the door to commercial work. By putting your work out there for nothing, you would attract businesses to your brand and they would actually pay you cold hard cash to work for them. And so in 2018, I decided to put this to the test with a little experiment of my own. I picked out 18 photographs from my own library of nearly a quarter of a million shots and I uploaded them to Unsplash. Yes, that's right, I decided to sacrifice some of my photographs so I could test this marketing spin. My photographs turned out to be pretty popular and over the years they have been viewed and downloaded millions of times. I decided to leave my 18 sacrificial photos on there as part of an ongoing experiment and every once in a while Unsplash emailed me to tell me just how much everyone except me is benefiting from my photographs. I'll put the stats up on the screen so you can see just how well it's going for them. Amazing, right? Nearly 22 million views, nearly 55,000 downloads used on sites like Buzzfeed, Medium, Trello and Notion. My most popular photograph has been downloaded an incredible 21,000 times. And can you guess what I have got in return? That's right, sweet fuck all, nothing, nada. No business inquiries, no exposure, no collaborations, zero. Not so much as a fucking reach around. Now evidently my photographs have commercial appeal. How can anyone argue to the contrary when they have been used over 50,000 times? It's a statement of fact, and yet I'm still waiting for all these business opportunities to flood my inbox. Actually, that's a lie, I'm not waiting. I was under no delusions when I uploaded my 18 photos to Unsplash. I knew that there would be no benefit to me at all and I had been proved 100% right. But hold on Andy, don't forget that this is all about the greater good mate. You're helping to, and I quote, fuel creativity around the world. And I'll tell you what, I'm all down for the greater good if we're all getting nothing but a warm glow of contentment out of it. But that simply isn't the case, is it? This is some animal farm version of the greater good. All pigs are equal, but some pigs are more equal than others. If Unsplash was all about community and creativity, then surely the founders of the company would have ploughed those Getty dollars back into the community, right? Or does being selfless only extend as far as the schmucks uploading the images? The founder and CEO of Unsplash is Michael Cho, and I had to poke around on the internet looking for photographs of his house. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any, but I'm willing to bet he's not living in a five square meter apartment, washing his socks and jocks in the kitchen sink, and living on two minute noodles. Let's be clear about this. All that Unsplash has achieved in its glorious eight year history is the suicidal devaluation of the already chronically devalued stock photography market. It is hard to go past free. Hold on, you might be saying, what about the quality issue? You can't compare the professionally produced images on iStock with the amateurish snaps on Unsplash. And there's two answers to that. Firstly, most of the photography on Unsplash is great. And secondly, even if they were worse, it doesn't matter. They don't have to be as good as the photos on Adobe Stock or Dreamstime or Shutterstock because they're perfectly acceptable for the majority of the use case scenarios in which a stock photograph is required. They don't have to be amazing, they just have to be good enough. Despite what the marketing team in the Emperor's New Clothes department of Unsplash might suggest, they are not being used for the covers of magazines, they're the headers to a million blog articles on fishing tackle, crafting and Funko collectibles. There's well over two million images on Unsplash now and you can find a half decent image for pretty much everything you require. Unsplash's death blow to the casual stock photography scene isn't actually what annoys me the most though. Getty and the other stock libraries had, as I've shown, made their royalty payments to photographers so minuscule that it hasn't been a worthwhile enterprise for many years now. No, what annoys me most is how Unsplash made millions of dollars in profit out of the goodwill of the photographic community. People freely gave up their images because of some bullshit feel-good fantasy, and they got repaid by the company founders selling out to Getty who plastered iStock photo adverts all over the site. Getty turned Unsplash into one big 
upsell. Can't find what you're looking for, madam? Perhaps it's available in our iStock collection. Allow me to show you a selection of possible images. If you've ever considered uploading your photographs to Unsplash, please don't. And if you've uploaded photos there already, then consider deleting them. By continuing to share your images freely on Unsplash, you are making money for the biggest commercial stock photo company on the planet. We will never return to the days when it was possible to buy a new lens for your camera from the residuals accumulated by your photographs licensed to a stock library, but we can at least retain a little bit of our dignity. In particular, raise a middle finger, point it squarely at Unsplash, and have nothing further to do with them. All right, now I'm aware that this has been a pretty negative video so far, and as I'm actually a naturally optimistic sort of a bloke, I wanted to finish things off with a positive suggestion. Earlier on, I mentioned that the reason photography had become so devalued was due to the middlemen and a lack of self-belief, and it's that second part that I wanted to talk about now. You see, I feel that if photographers had better self-belief and valued their own work more highly, we wouldn't be in this situation in the first place. After all, nobody holds a gun to your head and forces you to upload your photos to a stock library or indeed to Unsplash. It's a conscious decision that people make. We feel like we need these middlemen to successfully market and sell our photographs and the truth is that in many cases, we simply do not. It is possible to make money from licensing your photographs if you take ownership of the entire process. I stopped uploading my images to stock libraries about eight years ago and began selling them myself. And let me tell you guys, if I can do it, then anyone can. I license my photos to local businesses, tourism organizations, and the media. I can do this because I have a little niche. I sell landscape photographs of a very specific part of the world, a small region known as the south coast of New South Wales. And while I might be tempting fate, there is not that much in the way of organized competition out there also selling photographs of this part of the world. I've got nearly 250,000 photographs of the South Coast that I've shot over the last decade and there isn't a stock library on the planet that gets within a nautical mile of that. Not Getty or its myriad subsidiaries, not Dreamstime, not Shutterstock, not Adobe. I've been looking through those libraries for photographs of this region and the options are limited and for the most part pretty crappy. For many well-known locations here the stock libraries don't even have a single image to license and you also find the same crappy images popping up wherever you look because the photographers uploaded them to multiple libraries to improve their chances of making a sale. So when someone wants a photograph of a local beach, town, park or lookout and when they don't find what they want on the aforementioned stock libraries, I'm often the one they call. And when I license my photo, I get the full and complete fee, and I'm still usually cheaper than the stock libraries. So if you've got a niche, perhaps a specific geographic region you live in, or a style of photography you're adept at, then I strongly suggest you take advantage of it. Leverage the uniqueness of your niche. Don't upload to the multinational stock libraries and for fuck's sake, do not upload to Unsplash. As long as we photographers let these organizations take the piss out of us, they will continue to do so. Stand up for yourself, take control of your portfolio and give the middle finger to the middlemen. Till next time, guys.